so in today's video we're going to take a look at this terminal based music player and as you can see on the screen here it's pretty amazing yeah, this is basically almost like a perfect front end for a music player, which also requires a back end or a music player service to run properly. So if we look at how this functions, at first we'll see that we have this header up here that shows us the music that we're playing and the name of that artist. And we also have the volume controls right here. Like for example, I can increase the volume with the D dot sign and also comma to then decrease the volume. I can choose to play or pause the music as you can see here, we also have this nice progress bar down here and we can actually skip tracks like this or press F to go forward or backwards in a track with B and P to then pause the music again. S will then just totally stop everything from playing and P to replay whatever song that you were playing before. You can also hit the greater than sign to move to the next track or the lesser than sign to then move to the previous track. You can also move your cursor to the track you want to play and just press enter on it and it should play that track. You can use your mouse to scroll up and down here or I can use J or K. I can do uh, capital G to go all the way to the end, G to go to the top. I can use um, I can use D I believe to remove the track from the queue. I can use control U, control D to move up and down. If I want to search for a track name or an artist name on one of these tabs, I can actually just use the slash and just search for that and it highlights up in green because that's basically how I set up my color. So let's say you want to find uh, a song name and you can actually do that just by searching for it. You can also select multiple tracks by hitting space and it marks all those track and then you can do shift J to move that whole block up and down or you could just move a single track by putting your cursor on it and then just doing shift K and shift J. The directory navigation itself is also very similar to Yahtzee or Ranger if you've used it before. You can use L and H to go in and out of the directory and it works for all the tabs including the library and the artist tab as well. So all the Vim key bindings are basically available in here and this is what I really like about this. It just feels so right at home and so customizable to the point where you can change it to however you like. If you're confused about the key bindings and don't remember what they are, you can actually hit whatever key bind you have set and just look at the different key bindings. Like I have mine set to question mark, so you can set that in the configurations and then we can hit escape or control C to get out of that tab. So if we take a look at the tabs, I basically have only about five tabs here. I can move through my tabs with uh, the tab button and shift tab to then go backwards or I can just use one to go to queue directly, two to go to playlist, three for library, four for artists and I have capital F set for search. You can change all these key bindings later in your configuration. There's actually more tabs that you can add but for me I just prefer to have these specific tabs. It's not only the tabs that are customizable. Everything you see here is pretty much customizable, whether it's going to be the progress bar, the header. If you don't want the header, you can totally just remove this whole thing. And yeah, even the title, the artist and the duration here can be changed. So everything is pretty much customizable, including the album art as well. And the good thing about this music player is that if you resize the panes or anything, the album art still remains the same, which is just amazing when comparing it to other music player. And it's just great that it allows us to have an album art right there. You can move the album R to the left as well if you want, but yeah. Anyways, let's look at the tabs again. So the first one I have is the Q tab. This is almost like a list for the tracks that you've added to your Q. They're all going to show up here. And the next tab that we're going to take a look at is the playlist tab. So this is basically like your playlist and the tracks that you've added to your playlist. You can add your whole playlist to a cube using A and that will add all the tracks to your queue. So for example, if I want to remove all the tracks from here, what I can actually do is capital D and it will ask me if I want to clear this queue. So yes, and we'll go to the playlist tab. If I hit A on this playlist, it's going to add the playlist to my queue just like that. But if I hit capital A, it's going to basically add all the playlists here into my queue. But the fact that these two are empty, there's literally nothing to add. Or you can just come in here, press capital A, and it will also add that to Q. So that's how you would add things to the Q, but how would you add the tracks from your Q to your playlist? So what I can actually do is go to the track that I wanna to add to my playlist, press A on that, and just choose the playlist that I wanna add it to. For example, if I wanna add it to the second one, I can just press enter twice, and it will put that song into that playlist. 
For now, I haven't found a way to like select multiple tracks and then just add them all at once to a playlist. Even if I select multiple tracks and add them to a playlist, only the current selected track that your cursor is on will get added to that playlist. But there's still a way to like add all of the songs into a new playlist, but it only works if you want to create like a new playlist. So for example, we have only three playlists right now, but now we kind of just want to remove some of these songs by pressing D. And now we want to add all of these to our new playlist. We can actually just hit Control S and type that playlist name, like for example, new playlist, save and go here. And now we basically have that new playlist here. There isn't a way to add like all the new tracks to your current playlist yet. You can only do that like one track at a time. So that's unfortunately the limit, but hopefully it gets implemented um, sooner or later. The library tab just stores all the music that you downloaded on your machine. And how I have mine set up is I basically have a directory of the artist and then I have the music inside there. And you can also see the metadata tags. And for the artist tab, it's similar to the library tab, but it's just like artist. But yeah, you can also go into here and basically add a track from here to your queue and it's going to show up at the end here. Uh, let me just remove all of this so we can see it clearly. Even if I go to my library, I can also add the tracks from here by doing something like uh, A and that will add this whole directory to the queue. You can add any tracks to the queue from the library or the artist tab. And then finally, we have the search tab, which just allows us to search for any artist or any music, things like that. So I can come up here, do I to insert and search something like Fred. And it's just going to show up all the music that is related to Fred right here. And I can also search for featured. So if I do something like um, Joy, and this is going to bring up only that song that has Fred and Joy showed up. And you can actually change these around and mess with these as well. So it will like link to your metadata tag somehow, but yeah, I'll show you later. Okay, so before we get to the point where we start setting up our RMPC, there is a few things you need before RMPC can work. If you haven't used a terminal-based music player before, the first thing you need is MPD. MPD is like a music player daemon. You can think of it like a music server or like a backend for RMPC. So it usually handles things like music playlist or music databases and streaming audio to your speaker. Because if you don't have MPD, there's basically nothing and no audio service running. You can easily install MPD. For example, if you're on a Mac, you're going to run something like brew install MPD. If you're on Linux or Windows or whatever else it is that you're on, the command changes, of course. Next up is installing MPC. MPC is basically how you talk to MPD from the terminal. So it lets you play, pause, stop music, browse all those playlists, control the volume. RMPC doesn't necessarily need MPC to work. It's more for controlling MPD. Again, if you're on a Mac, just install it with Brew install MPC. To install RMPC on a Mac, you can actually use cargo install to install RMPC. But if you're on Linux, you can either use Pacman or Yay to install RMPC. When it comes to my MPD configuration, I just have my MPD directory set up in my .config. So home.config slash MPD. This is going to be the main file for how you set up your MPD configurations. So let's take a look at this file first. So we have two things specified here, and these are going to be your music directory. So the place where you store your music. So the path is obviously going to be your path. Don't use mine if you don't have it set up exactly like this. And also the same thing for playlist and database, log files, PID and state file as well. And then we also have auto update and all the sim links set to yes. And then we have the bind to address and port set to localhost 6600. And the audio output, I believe this is going to be different if you're not on Mac. Then we also have the audio output support. So right here, if you're using a Mac, this MPD configuration should just work fine as it is. Before MPD can work, you just need to set this up properly first. We have this music and playlist directory. So this is where you store your music. And then we have the playlist. So you can create a new playlist from here as well by just typing a new playlist with .m3u. So yeah, that is pretty much my MPD config. And this line right here is absolutely not for album art support. I don't know why I have that there. If you have installed and set up the MPD configuration correctly, you should now be able to do something like MPD and the path to your MPD configuration to then start running MPD. If you want to check if MPD is actually working, you could do MPC status to check if this is actually showing up. Okay, so finally, we're going to take a look at our RMPC config. So my RMPC config is located in the home slash dot config directory. 
And we have two things inside here. So let's take a look in my main config, which is config.ron. You can obviously refer to the documentation for all the options that you have. But yeah, these are just like the basic setups here. So let me try and explain to you what these are. So Okay, first up, let's just look at the album art right here. So this is just setting up the settings for the album art, like the max size or like the vertical align, horizontal alignment. And then we have enable config hot reload to true, but it doesn't really work all the time. Sometimes you still need to quit and come back into RMPC for it to work. Then we have the theme, which is going to play a big part in how your RMPC looks, but I'm not saying you have to configure RMPC. RMPC after the cargo installation itself will work out of the box and these key bindings are basically default key bindings. I've only changed a couple of them which is like the switch to the search tab with capital F and I've also changed the show help tab to uh, question mark instead. So yeah these are the global key binds and then we have the navigation key binds which I did not change anything and for Q these are also the defaults. And this is basically the search tab. So you can go through here and check for the things that you could possibly change. Again, refer to the documentation because it really does explain a lot of things you could do. So this is what I meant when I say that it's probably going to link with your track metadata is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, but most of the time I just use the any tag anyways because it just searches through everything. And next up is just the settings for the artist, the current song format. So title, artist, and then the album. And this is where you would customize your tabs. So like I basically have the Q tab as the first tab. And then I have 75% set for the Q section and 25% for the album art. So 75% here, 25% here. And yeah, and these are just the next tab. So we have playlist, we have library, artist, and search. And you can swap these things around, change their positions, but then you would also have to change um, these key bindings right here for those tabs. Those are pretty much the basic RMPC config that you might want to change or mess around with when you first install it. If you don't like how your RMPC looks and you kind of want to customize it even more, you actually need to go and create a themes folder like this. Go in here and just create a custom RMPC theme called whatever.ron. Here I just have a custom.ron and you can customize everything. So you can change the colors to your likings. These are just like the browsers column width. So like the first one's like 20, 30, and then 60. Next we have the symbols, which would just be the symbols over here. As you can see, the directory symbol and the music symbol track symbol. We have progress bar, which is something that you can play around with if you want to change the symbol here. But this is just what I have. Browser song format here. This one is like the format for your title and artist. So like, for example, if I go to my library here, it starts with the name and then the artist name. Then we have the song table format. The song table format is where you customize these title, artist, and duration and the size of each and every one of them. So for example, if you want to add another one of these, these, then you could just like create another one of these and just change it to like um, album and change the text accordingly of course so yeah but currently I only have three so the title the artist and the duration and next up is the header so these are going to be the ones that are right here at the top so currently I have three things set on the first one for the second row I just have the default duration shown and the text and the artist in the center you can see that we have the artist down here we then have those uh, repeat random consume and single commands right here and yeah and this is another thing that you can change so the layout is probably the most important thing out of all of this because the layout allows you to pretty much move things around right now i currently have my header just set to the top so this player right here you can move this around if you want but yeah this is just how i have it set up yeah and again you can always refer to the document documentation to look at the things you can change uh, and just make sure that you're on the correct release of your RMPC version because I think it's different for each release. Everything about RMPC customization and configuration is just all available in the documentation. As always, everything you see in this video, every configuration, you can find it at my dot files. I will leave a link down in the description below. And yeah, this video was inspired by one of the videos that Bread on Penguins made about RMPC music player. So shout out to her as well. That's all I have for you guys today and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.